Um, congratulations on the uh, on the new role. Um, what does it entail? What's what's your remit? Well, basically now I look after the whole of the Caterham Group, which includes the Formula One team, the cars business, the technology company that we have up in Norfolk, and the recently announced um, bikes motorbike company. So Caterham are doing a bike. Yes, they've um, they've just launched. We've just launched uh, Caterham Bikes, and we're aiming to bring three bikes to the market within the next twelve months. Can I have a go on one when it's done? Of course you can, yes. Excellent. Then yeah, make a note of that. I ride a bike. I want to have a go on one of your bikes. Um, so you're involved in the Formula One project as well? Correct. I, um, the, the Formula One team report into me. Cyril Abitabul, who's the team principal and CEO of F1, reports to me. So while Cyril uh, obviously um, will be running the team on a day-to-day -day basis, I work alongside him on strategic vision, strategy for the group, um, and my main aim is to try now to bring the whole of the group together so that we benefit each other, if you like. So for us, the F1 platform is really important to grow the brand of Caterham Cars. It's a, it's a far cry, isn't it, from Caterham's sort of core business of many years of just building little lightweight two-seater sports cars. There's much more to it now. Correct. We, um, we have come a long way in the seven years that I've been with Caterham. Uh, I started with Caterham Cars seven years ago. Um, and since uh, Tony Fernandez and Cameron Dean took over the business three years ago, they have made it quite clear that they want to grow the brand. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's where I've been involved over the last two or three years, trying to promote that now. And you've got a really wide variety of machines. You've got uh, road cars, race cars. Just give us a flavor of what people can go and Ogle at. Yep. Well, if you if you take a look at our stand now, um, we've got our latest edition, which is the 165 model, which is a Suzuki engine, three-cylinder, 80 horsepower, and that starts at under 15,000 um, pounds for a, a kit build. Uh, and then, of course, we go right up through various road iterations. We've got the 485, which is our fastest ever European car we brought out. We've just launched the 620R, which is uh, 620 horsepower per tonne in the UK. Uh, that's on the stand. Um, and then we go right up to the Formula One car, which is at the pinnacle of our business. You're involved in the Formula One project. It's, it's tough, isn't it, in Formula One? Um, Caterham's an iconic brand, been very good at what it's done over the years, but struggling in Formula One at the moment? Yeah, I think um, it's no secret that, that Formula One is a very, very difficult game to be in. Um, we have shareholders with big ambitions, um, but unfortunately we'll never have the budget of the likes of Red Bull or Mercedes or people like that. So what we have to do is try and utilize the team that we have to the best of our ability and, and budget wisely and spend wisely. Um, you know, what we're hoping with 2014 being a new season, that uh, come the first race in Melbourne, Maybe we, uh, we might be there and we might have one or two opportunities because there might be some attrition from the big teams. Who knows? Um, <coughs> we have passed all of our homologation tests. We were one of the first teams to do that. And as I sit here today, we intend to be at all of the three pre-season tests, which I believe some of the other teams have already said they won't be. So we're making good progress. People uh, often say that a, a, a complete rules rethink makes the big teams get bigger and the little teams struggle because the big teams throw untold resources at it. Are you fearful that that may be the case again? I, I think we have always had an opinion of, of the sport and, and the money involved and, and the separation between the big teams and the small teams. And we've got quite a strong voice ab about that. You know, we don't think it's right. Um, but uh, my view is, and the rest of the team is, we must have a chance. Everyone started with a clean piece of paper. You're right, the bigger teams probably have three or four times the resource to, to, to throw at it. But we've got some very good guys. I've got some very good guys in the team and have every confidence in them. And with a good tailwind, a bit of luck, who knows what might happen. Yeah, absolutely. We wish you well. Have you got any drivers yet? Uh, we have. Thank you. Have you? Have you announced them? No, I haven't. No. Can you? Um, no, I can't. Oh. No. Um, we, uh, we are planning on doing an announcement hopefully next week sometime. Okay. So... Um, and you were, last night you won an award, didn't you, at the Motorsport Industry Association Business Excellence Awards. That was uh, a nice touch. Uh, we certainly did. Um, we won Business of the Year from the Motorsport Industry Association. And again, that was fantastic for us as Caterham Group because I think 
it shows that people are recognizing what we're trying to do as a brand and what we're trying to do as a group. Uh, as you say, we've come a long way from where we were probably 10 years ago even. And, and it's great to see that we've been recognized by our peers, part of the Motorsport Industry Awards. And you know that's part of what we're doing in cars, part of what we're doing on our engineering arm, as well as the F1 team. So I'm, I'm ever hopeful for the future. Okay. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Graham McDonald.